Hey, all right, Shalom, <clears throat> Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Makar Kodash. I want to say and give double honors to the apostles and the bishop elders, a great millstone for teaching his word in truth and sincerity and holding it well, and salutations to the elect, the 144,000, Lord willing, with some of those men, and to all those who fear and believe in the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, which is the elect. Hey, I'm the brother Kabar Yahweh Joe from GMS, Hawaii. Coming to you with another um, quick lesson. And this lesson was inspired by a video that I saw. This map that you see right here in front of you is uh, it's an old map, a uh, housing map of Los Angeles, California. But this map is um, anecdotal of any major city in America when it comes to housing. And um, so two things inspired me to do this lesson. One was a video that I saw on TikTok. This video right here, which I want to play in a little bit, it's about a, a former thriving community in Los Angeles that was destroyed so that a highway could be ran through it. And it was it was so-called Negroes that lived in these affluent neighborhoods, right? Actors, lawyers, doctors, and so forth. And as well as the video that I'm watching uh, with Bishop Elder Inak, his uh, lesson is called Black History Equals White Future. Take it personal. Amos 1 and 11, which we're going to get that. And um, his page is GMS I solve 144. Uh, subscribe and be edified. Okay. And so, as I, again, as I was watching this, 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 less, this video right here, it was entitled Segregation by Design. Um, I'm going to follow it. It was entitled uh, Segregation by Design. And um, it was extremely vexating, you know, when you watch this. And you see how Esau purposely, you know, oppresses Jake in every way. You know, you know, right now you got the whole gender war going on. So-called black and Latino and Native American men and women just can't get along. Um, you know, um, we're at we're at constant odds. You know, uh, there's this huge uh, disparity in um, economics in the so-called Negro, Latino, Native American uh, commu so-called communities. All right, that's another issue. Then you got um, a whole other host of issues that follow that, you know. And in America, there was once the American dream was to, to own your own home, to have a vehicle and to be able to go vacation with your family. And you can, you was able to do this on one income, you know. There was, you know, um, And it was typically the so-called white family that was able to do that. And this is another sign that shows us that this is not our, our kingdom. This is not our rest. Let me open up with this precept, Micah 2 and 10. Right. Here's the book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 10. Okay. <clears throat> Micah 2 and 10. Matter of fact, let me get it in a few other. Micah 2 and 10. Just bear with me, brothers. Keep it going a little slow. Uh, this is Micah, chapter 2, verse 10. Yep, and it reads, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even with a sword destruction. So America, this is, you can apply this to America. Because this place, this this world that we live in, right, it, it's not our, um, it's not our rest. You know, it says in the NLT, up, be gone. This is no longer your land and home. For you have filled it with sin and ruined it completely. And that's what we did to our homeland in Israel. You know, this is the reason why the Lord put us out but you can also apply this same precept to america you know america isn't our rest let's look up that word for rest all right in the hebrew that word for rest is <clears throat> mana mana ha mana kaha mana kaha right which is a uh, resting place or quietness and that's not america that is not this place that is not this place all right, this place is a place, a valley of death, you know, and these Edomites, they made it so hard for us to even live. That's, you know, the scriptures speak about in Daniel uh, 9 and 12, how like what has been done to us hasn't been done on no other nation or on the whole earth, you know, and our people are oppressed wherever we go, especially here in America. First of all, this, this whole country is stolen property, right? It was stolen from our brothers, the Gadites. The Issacharites, 
the Rubenites, so-called Native Americans and Mexicans today, right? It was stolen from them. Then, uh, then we, the so-called Negro West Indians and Haitians, were brought over here in bulk, large numbers, to serve captivity all throughout this area. And the most affluent place of all these places in which we serve captivity here in the Western Hemisphere is America. All right, America is uh, what we call today the United States, right? But it's stolen property, it's stolen land. And even on that stolen land, Esau make a way to oppress us. You got our brothers and sisters on um, looks like a map of Indian reservations, right? And I hate to use that term because that's not who they are. They're Israelites, right? Like right? the East Indians, they don't get called, uh, they don't have a, they're not on reservations, but our people are, all right? It says, uh, let me see this. It says the population of indige indigenous alone, uh, alone, 80% or more, right? Then you got other people. And then on these reservations, you got a lot of uh, um, Chinese and East Indians running stores, operating, same shit they got in the ghetto, same thing they got in the Caribbean islands. These nations, they, they're licking our wounds while we're here. Another reason why this place ain't our rest, right? This ain't our resting place. So the scriptures tell us to rise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, all right? It says, because it is polluted, right? And it's all manners of wickedness and evil. So that's another thing, you know, it shall destroy you even with a sword of destruction. Right, and you can apply that to America. You can apply that to this place. Every time my people try to find rest in this place, we were put at this ease. We were destroyed. We were killed. We were uh, we were uh, exploited. We were destroyed out of out of it. And you had communities of so-called thriving communities of so-called Negroes. You try to get your own home, and then what they do? They build a fucking highway through your your city or your town, and they and they kick you out of your house. But they don't do that to the Edomites, all right? So let me play, play this video real quick, and hopefully we can be edified with some precepts. Sugar Hill, once home to Ella's Black Elite, before and after construction of the Santa Monica Freeway. Previously, the wealthiest black neighborhood in Los Angeles, construction of the 10 cut Sugar Hill in half in the 1960s. Despite residents' protests, the highway took hundreds of homes with it. Located to the west of downtown, on the border between Central and South Los Angeles. Yeah, and, and it says right here, construction of the 10 level, the wealthiest black neighborhood in Los Angeles. But you still got smaller neighborhoods in West and in, um, in, um, in Los Angeles that were, were so-called Negroes living there. I think it's like one is Woodland Hills or something like that. You got a lot of Negroes that's up to, as well to do living in them areas. But... Here it is. This is in the 1930s. They destroyed that. They, they got it up out of there. You know? All to make way for a highway. And really, that highway was um, done on purpose as retribution because the Edomites lost that neighborhood to these affluent black people. Right? So-called black people. So what they do, 15 years later, they leveled it to the ground and destroyed it. And again, this is another sign that this is not our rest. You know, no matter how hard you work in this place, no matter what you give to this place, it's always, uh, it's always, it's never enough. You want to have to work 10 times harder and it's, it's no, there's no assurity in this place, no matter where you go. If there's an Edomite there, there's going to be confrontation because our spirits aren't the same. The area that became known as Sugar Hill was in the larger neighborhood of West Adams. West Adams is one of the oldest neighborhoods in the city of Los Angeles, with most of its buildings erected between 1880 and 1945. Prior to construction of the freeway, West Adams had been connected to downtown LA via the Los Angeles Railway Streetcar System, an electric tram network operating on street. Additionally, Pacific Electric Interurbans provided service across the region at large in a mix of private rights of way and street level. Sugar Hill is originally known as West Adams Heights. Prior to the 1940s, black people were technically barred from living in the area due to the presence of restrictive covenants. The restrictive covenant was a clause written into the deed of a home which permitted it to be sold to, quote, 
members of the Caucasian race only. Right. And despite these covenants. And, and and these these covenants were made all throughout America. You know, he's just focusing on Los Angeles right now. But they're, they're, and they're still they're still, you know, valuable to this day. There are places where it's it's just totally so called white people there, right? And then no Negroes, none of none of any kind, no Hispanics, no Native Americans, man. And this land don't belong to Esau, right? And this is oppression. You might think it's like, oh, you know, it's just people deserve to live next where they want to live at. But wait, why does Esau get the fatness of the earth? Well, that's part of the, his blessing. You know, he got it through the sword, right? Okay, it says right here, their heirs and assigns. It says their heirs and assignee as part of the consideration um, that within the scribe promises shall not promises shall not be sold, leased, or occupied by any person of or persons other than uh than uh the Caucasian race, uh than members of the Caucasian race. No part said premises uh said premises shall ever be used or occupied by or sold, conveyed, leased, rented, or given to Negroes or Mongolians or any other persons or persons of the Hebrew <laughs> Negro race. Or Mongolian race, and then they'll say the so-called Jew, right? They probably put that in there as a so-called Jew, but this is us, man. Listen to this. It says persons of the Hebrew Negro race or Mongolian race or blood, except that colored or Mongolian servants may maintain, may be maintained on the premises. So you weren't allowed unless you were a servant. We know that so-called Jews was never servants in this place, man. This is us. This is us, bro. Right? I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna have to take that one, man. Hey, this is a, this is a win right here. You know what I mean? Because they'll say, well, they excluded so-called Jews, but Jews run everything, and they can melt into the population and 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 coalesce with the so-called white man because they're they're so-called white, right? But nonetheless, they did have uh, places where they they weren't permitted to live. Right? That's why a lot of these so-called Jays they they won't tell you that they're Jays even though. They'll change their name or whatever, so they can just slide up in there. But in reality, they didn't want us there, you know, you know, Mongolian race. Because you go to these neighborhoods now, you got Asians, you got um, 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 so-called Jays, man. You got Negroes too, right? For the, but it ain't it ain't in vast numbers, right? So they have restricted covenants where they didn't allow us to go into these places, and that's oppression, man. That's nothing but hatred. This is the book of Amos one and eleven. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, for three transgressions of Edom and for and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. And this is a part of his wrath, you know, to exclude you from housing, you know, and it should be not just a right, a, a, a privilege, but it should be a right for everyone to have adequate housing and adequate meaning a great good housing to the point where like it's safe it's secure it's protected you know but then you, you see where jake's live at now that's nothing but the curses all that violence and and murder and disenfranchisement man you know i was saying earlier to, to someone that uh all nations have different str uh, like a, a caste system within it you have the, the higher ups you have the the middle, and then you have the lower class of each nation, right? But for our people, it, it was permanently pushed that way. So the vast majority of the so-called Negro, Latinos, Native Americans live in areas in which they are predominantly lower income, which they say lower income, ghettos, that kind of spirit. You know, looking at this map of different reservations, these this land belonged to the so-called indigenous people here in America. But it was taken over, right? By Esau, and then he gave them corners to to dwell in. You know, that's what he do. That's you know how they do. You know what I'm saying? And the same thing happened to our people in Canada. You know what I'm saying? Navajo, Hopi, the Unita, and Ore, uh, and so forth. You know, so we want 
and this is their land. They're prisoners in their own land. Just like we're prisoners here. You know? Because we're the Israelites. Let me keep playing this. Beginning in the 1910s, as upper class whites began leaving West Adams for new development on the west side and in Beverly Hills, the rising black upper class moved in in defiance of the covenant. Most prominent among these new residents were actors and performers, including Hattie McDaniel, the first black woman to win an Oscar, actress and community activist Louise Beaver, and singer, actress, and Broadway star Ethel Waters. McDaniel's house in particular became the social center of Sugar Hill. The biographer writes, the best of black show business performed within the walls of 2203 South Harvard. Duke Ellington, Cab Calloway, Count Basie, and more. At this time, West Adams was popularly rechristened Sugar Hill in honor of the legendary neighborhood in Harlem. The larger West Adams area became a center of black life. In response to this ascendant black elite, in 1945, white residents sued to enforce the restrictive covenants and evict black families from Sugar Hill. Black residents fought back. McDaniel took a leading role in this fight, teaming with NAACP attorney Lauren Miller to organize the neighborhood's legal defense. In opening arguments, the attorneys for the white plaintiffs insisted that the black West Adams residents were in violation of the law, that restrictive covenants were protected under the Constitution, and that the black property owners must be required to surrender their homes immediately. Yeah, and then, again, this show you that this ain't your rest. And even if you got a small win, that's all it is, because ultimately you're not going to win the war here. Esau got too much influence and power. This is his kingdom. This ain't our kingdom. This ain't our rest. All right? And this is nothing but hatred. You see? This is the book of... Um, this is the book of... Micah two and two. Um, they they cut and they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. Man. And that's what you see. See, like, and I was sitting here thinking, like, in our kingdom, you Edomites, you heathens, you ain't got to worry about that because you're not going to have a house. Y'all going to be pit people. You're not going to, you're not allowed to live above the ground. You're not going to be allowed to live above the ground, right? And new lines are going to be drawn. We're going to have a wall around our city, starting with Jerusalem. We're going to have walls around our land, our country. The only ones that's going to be allowed in there are Israelites. And if you're working, that's it. After that, you got to go. Unless you want to, you know, daily servants who work around the clock, you know what I'm saying? And even still, you're going to have a small place to stay or whatever. And then you, hey, but you're not going to be post it up there. Ain't gonna be no rights, ain't gonna be no no um what do you call it? No judge and jury to decide if you can live with us. And this is why the Lord already created uh, segregation naturally. That's why you can read the book of um uh, Deuteronomy 30, 30, 30 and 8. I want to say 32 and 8. Deuteronomy 32 and 8. We're supposed to be separated. You know I mean we ain't supposed to be living together. We ain't supposed to be living amongst each other, but you Edomites, you're living on stolen property. Uh, okay, it says uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 8. When the Most High divided the nations and their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Right, let's read that in the NLT. Okay. It says, when the Most High assigned lands, to the nations, so all nations have their lands that the Lord set for them. When he divided up the human race, so the Lord wasn't about a universal place where all humans can dwell together. That's a lie. That's an Edomite lie. Because if that was the case, you wouldn't have an Edomite Sue and Jakes to take their take them out of their houses and kick them out. After they unpaid houses, they done, they done drummed up the money for a bank loan. And that's another reason why the vast majority of Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans in America can't, uh, uh, home uh, home ownership is not easy access to you. They'll give it to a woman now, you know, single woman, you know, single black woman, right? I think I just saw some of the data say that single black women uh, outpace their, their men in home ownership. Man. 
if they don't understand it, they, you know, most of the women are under subprime, sub, sub, subprime uh, lending shit. And they're, and, and again, they're single. You know what I mean? They're struggling to, to maintain the mortgage, you know, whatever. You know, but as as a whole lot of people, we're what? We're relegated to renters. Like all of us rent. You know, I know a few brothers who own their own properties. You know what I'm saying? And even if they do own their own property, they catching hell. You know, we're 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 reduced to living. We we have to pay Esau to live in a place like month to month. I know we're gonna sign leases, but it's literally month to month. Or you're renting a home, a place, a dwelling place, and that's not a shorty. It's just a uh, let me see. For here we have no, um, so no short dwelling place. This is um the book of Isaiah thirty two verse eighteen. Let's see, yes, sir. Isaiah thirty two and eighteen. Hopefully it shows up. Right, Isaiah thirty two and eighteen. It says, "And my people, and my people shall, yep, and my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation, in sure dwellings, and in quiet places." Right, because that's what these Edomites they live in. That these Edomites here in America they live, and all through the world. But we're talking about America right now. They live in sure dwellings. They ain't got no threat getting kicked out. You know, it's quiet where they live at. It's peaceful, right? That's what's going to happen for us when the Lord sets up our kingdom, right? My people will live in safety, quietly at home. They will be at rest, man, because we're not quietly at home. I, I live in an apartment complex. I got to smell my neighbor's uh, cigarette smoke. You know, I got to hear the children, them argue. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's bug and uh, um uh, what do you call it? Pest inf inf infestation throughout the building. You know what I'm saying? Like that ain't that ain't peace and quiet. Not even in your own home, you can get peace and quiet. And then if we speak or we say something, they yell at us. They they shut up, turn it down. Wait a minute. But all day we gotta listen to y'all shit. You know what I'm saying? So this ain't in, in, in our kingdom. It's gonna be short. And and if you had a short dwelling place, you wouldn't have to worry about Esau kicking you out, taking your land. You know, but that's what that's that's the pride of the devil. Okay, uh, uh, dwell in peaceable and in sure dwellings. That word for sure is mat mata ma ma mapataza mapataza, right? Which is confidence, right? We have confidence, security, right? And you can clearly see that these jigs back in the day, they ain't had no security here. Right. Lauren Miller's counsel was what at the time was a shocking argument. He immediately moved to bar any testimony by or on behalf of the person, arguing that restrictive covenants violated both the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution, which mandated equal protection under the law, and the California State Constitution. In a landmark case, the court sided with Nathaniel, Miller, and Black residents, finding that the covenants did, in fact, violate the 14th Amendment. The victory wouldn't last. Fifteen years after residents won the right to remain in their homes, the California Highway Commission seized much of the neighborhood through eminent domain and demolished it for construction of the Santa Monica Freeway. Yep. I and that happened everywhere, especially where our people lived there. They didn't run these these uh, highways through affluent Edomite neighborhoods. They destroyed Jake's neighborhood. Eric Avila, a historian and Chicano studies professor at UCLA, writes in the LA Times, Black neighborhoods were considered to be blight. They were considered to be slums. The dominant perspective of the time was to eradicate blight, to get rid of the slums. The neighborhoods were simply wiped out without any efforts to remediate the damage that was done. In the case of Sugar Hill, the word slum was used loosely. Across Southern California, freeways that paved over black and Latino neighborhoods were completed, 
such as the 5, 10, and 1 ten, seen here. On the other hand, those proposed to cross wider or affluent areas were stopped. Highway builders often defended taking property in black neighborhoods by arguing that the land was cheapest there, a fact that relied on racist real estate practices and government-backed redlining policies that discouraged investment in black areas. In addition to the direct displacement of the communities in their path, the freeways also facilitated neighborhood segregation, created as walls to contain LA's growing black and Hispanic population from moving into the more desirable areas on the growing west side. The 10 cut Sugar Hill in half, taking many of the neighborhood's homes and mansions with it, and creating a wall across the community. What had once been a short walk between Hattie McDaniel's house and Ethel Water was now over a mile. There's absolutely no question that it destroyed the neighborhood, said Cal State Northridge professor Josh Sire. Berkeley Square, one of the most wealthy sections of Sugar Hill, was entirely leveled. Where's Berkeley Square now? Well, right here. Well, at least it was. Now, of course, you're looking at the middle of the Santa Monica Freeway. This 10 freeway, which is, of course, a major artery for Los Angeles now, would bisect and divide and essentially destroy what was, at the time, the most prosperous African-American community in Los Angeles, one of the most prosperous on the West Coast. Dr. Ruth J. Temple was among those displaced by the freeway. Dr. Temple lived at 5 Berkeley Square and was among the first black women doctors in California. She was a leader in providing free and affordable health care to underserved communities in Los Angeles, establishing the Temple Health Institute in East Los Angeles. Dr. Perry Beal lived with his family at Seven Berkeley Square. Dr. Beal was one of the first black doctors in Houston, Texas. He moved to LA in mid-1952, where he continued to practice. Reverend Pearl Wood lived at 19 yeah, Berkeley Square. Yeah, look, hey, Jake was living good, man. Jake was waxing fat, but the Lord said, no, not so, not here, you know, reduce the rubble, man. Look how big that house is. That shit, some shit like that today will cost you the tens of millions of dollars, bro. And Jake was living like kings on a high horse, man. That's when those, that's when those uh, professions, being a doctor, a medical doctor back then, that was like, shit, that was like being an NBA player today, you know? 19 Berkeley was a hotspot for events in the neighborhood, regularly hosting some of Sugar Hill's largest gatherings. These are only some of the hundreds in Sugar Hill displaced by construction of the town. In all, the highway would displace tens of thousands across the region. Shortly after construction of the freeway, the LA Sentinel wrote, the road could have been built without cutting through Sugar Hill. However, in order to miss Sugar Hill, it was said that the route would have to cut through Fraternity and Sorority Row around USC. Fraternity Row still stands, and Sugar Hill does not. So you know who won out. Yeah, Esau. Esau won out because this ain't your rest. And this is uh, the elder, the Bishop Elder <clears throat> Inop was going into the same thing right here. It's your history. After the Holocaust slavery, after the Emancipation Proclamation was brought up some charges and put our people in jail, using them as free labor, then you had Jim Crow. Then prior to that, in the midst of the 2030s, 1980, or whatever, when you had black cities formed, they would have race riots where the so-called white women were playing race or that they were doing too well. And through their jealousy, they would come over there and rape, rob, kill it. Right, so like the, like the Bishop Elder said, a lot of that shit was because of jealousy. They destroyed where you lived at because they were jealous. You know, because in their minds, you're, you're, you're not even a second class citizen. You're a third class. You don't exist to the so-called white men. You shouldn't exist. That's hatred. Right? That's nothing but envy. Ezekiel 35 and 5. Because thou has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity. And the time that their iniquity had an end, right? Uh, verse six. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue. So Esau is gonna get his come up in his man. You understand? Because this this man he he has had a perpetual hatred for us. 
right? And he make he made our captivity that much more worse because of his hatred. And these Edomites, the average Edomite, they don't know why they hate you. They just they just can't stand you. They can't stand the sight of you. They can't stand the smell. They they they, they hear you. None of that, right? Unless they're exploiting you. But they don't know why they hate us, but we do, because they're the Edomites and we're the Israelites. All right. We're the Israelites. So they hate us. It was it was since our, since the birth, since in the womb, it was like that. And because he had that perpetual hatred, he never stopped. And this is the evidence. All of this is evidence, man. From the hangings to the uh the prison industrial complex to the eradication of of um well-to-do so-called black Latino and Native American neighborhoods and towns, you know, because they didn't do that to them, the Chinese. You ain't do that to the Japanese. You ain't do it to the Filipinos. You ain't do that to the Japhetic people over here. You know, and you got little Italy all over the place. You got little, uh, little, uh, you know, Jayish towns, you know what I mean? And, 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 and shit, you go to New York City and Brooklyn, they got their own police force. Jake ain't got his own police force. You know what I'm saying? They're allowed to handle things at the lowest level before the cops even come into the, to the areas. You know, only time the cops come in there is if they got to deal with a so-called Negro. You know, but they they this man has purposely destroyed our 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 us here, man. This and this is a perpetual hatred. That's why you ain't supposed to love this man. You got to be wise when you're around him, but you ain't got to love this man. He's not our neighbor. Because anytime we ever dwelt together, this man pushed us. Out of these, out of these places, man. Right? He pushed us out of there. This is out of the book of um, Proverbs, chapter twenty-two, verse twenty-eight. I was just looking at the uh, the commentary on this particular precept. It's right. It says, "Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set." Right? And when you go to the commentary, I went to the David Guzik commentary. Right? And you scroll down. I'll go all the way down right here. It says, do not remove the ancient landmarks which your fathers have set. It says, do not remove the ancient landmarks from the days when Joshua divided the promised land for the people of Israel. There were landmarks showing boundaries of property. It was a great crime and a scandal to remove these landmarks. Right? And that's what Esau has done. It says, uh, do not take the advantage in plowing or breaking up a field con contiguous to that of thy neighbor to set the dividing stones further into his field that thou mayest enlarge thy own take not what is not thy own in any case let all ancient divisions and the usage connected with them be held sacred and Esau didn't do that you see you, you saw that in this we see that with uh with the whole red line you know the Esau he destroyed people's property to make way for a big ass highway that he could have put somewhere else. They claim that they saved, they did all this to save something called Sorority's Row. But Sorority's Row is full of Edomites. So they're not gonna make that. You see? That's why the scripture says in Nahum 3 and 1, Woe to the bloody city, it is full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. And that bloody city is America. We're citizens, are we not? But Everything in this place is a lie. And it was gotten by robbery. And the prey, who would the prey? We are. We haven't departed. We're still here. These cities, these influential black cities, they have a website or a channel on YouTube for a black journal that goes through the list of cities that they burned, pillaged, and raped and robbed from Alabama, uh, Philadelphia, New York. And it's a two part theory. So look at your history. And that's the prophecy of Isaiah 26 chapter where it said the slain, the, the earth shall no more cover its slain. That's the atrocity. So that's why you're going to slavery. That's why you're going to take this ass with this, and we're going to, we all going to, we're going to take it away as person. That's right. The script, uh, the, uh, the bishop elder said, we're going to get on them. And they're going to take it personal. we all going to get a piece. Of the Edomites, every last Israelite gonna get a piece of the Edomites before the Lord get done with them. Like my man um, from Pope Fiction said, he said, uh, "I ain't done with you by far sight." 
I'm going to get medieval on your ass, man. Right? I'm going to get medieval on you, man. Right? This is uh, Psalms 149 and 6. Let, let the high praises of the Heavenly Father be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen because great vengeance is coming upon the heathen starting with you Edomites and the punishment upon the people to bind their kings with chains and rope and nobles with fetters of iron because that's what the Jake that's what the Jake, that's what Esau did to Jake that's what all these nations did to us man right to execute upon the judgment written this is the honor of all the saints so all the saints are going to get a piece of these Edomites ass man right it says to execute judgment written against them this is the glorious privilege of his faithful ones, praise the Lord. And that's right, man. Starting, oh, man, what the hell is that? Man? Starting with the elect, starting with the elect, we're gonna get, we're gonna get that up out of y'all, man. For what you did to us, man. You know, you got Jake running around here talking about we got, we need economics. We need to pull our our money together. We need to. They, we already did that, and look where they got you. And now it's to the point where, like, even if you wanted to try to commit to something like that it's not gonna work esau's laws he don't gotta he don't gotta send the clan he don't gotta uh send the bulldozer his laws and his his different state laws his different uh uh federal laws they prohibit you from even having something like that all right they prohibit you from having something like that okay you know that's one of the greatest atrocities in history is the judge. You're not going to get it from the, the congressman. You're not going to get it from the UN, the EU. You're not going to get it from the new president. You're only going to get it from the boss. And the Lord says, coming back to his face. That's why I was the only known. So that's the atrocity of the stuff that's coming. So now they have history as Tulsa, Holdsworth, and other parts that they don't bring out as much. If they were fairly low, we cut and let the documentary speak for itself. We understand why the prophecy says, see that leaders would be in captain, we should go into captain. That's right. That's right. And that's Revelation 13, starting at thir uh, 9. Right? Revelation 13, and starting at 9. Okay. It says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that, uh, verse 10, he that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints, man. So that's our patience and that's our hope and that's our faith is that the Lord is going to pay back you nations and he is going to do that. This is the reason why this uh, uh, scolding indictment is coming down on the so called white man, Esau, Edom, and all you nations, man. But first to Esau because. He's the one. He's the head right now, right? But all you heathen going to catch it. All you heathen going to, all your nobles going into captivity. All your kings going into captivity, right? You're going to be reduced to nothing when your house shy comes back and establish the kingdom of Israel, the kingdom of heaven here on earth, man. Because that's what the kingdom of heaven is. It's not a place where you just dwell in, in the spirit world forever and ever and don't never return to this physical world. Nah. The kingdom of heaven is for Israel. The kingdom of heaven is going to be here on earth. It was always set, set up that way. It was never a, a place where we had to die to go. If that's the case, then why are we ain't in the spirit world right now? Okay. This is the book of Acts. Um, chapter uh, um, 1 verse 6. When they therefore came together, they asked him, saying, Lord, Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel, man? And that's what it's always been about. It's always been about the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. All right. And when our land is established, we're gonna we're gonna have to say so. And nobody's living with us in our land. None of you nations, right? We're gonna have your women, the best of your women. They're gonna be catering and serving us. Your kings, they're gonna cater and serve to us. You people could never live in our in our in our sanctuary. You'll never be able to live in our homes. You'll never be able to live next to us. We're never going to be neighbors to you. Right? And where y'all live at is going to be poverty and, 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 and violence. 
and all that other madness that goes on. Because that's it's nothing but the curses. The Lord said he's going to put all those curses on all those that persecuted us and hated us. All right? So I just wanted to bring this out. I hope you're edified. God will say shalom unto the next.